Now some great games are coming out around the corner in 2021. Uh, we're all excited for actually, and it does seem like some time before we're able to get our hands on those titles, so today I wanted to talk about God Eater 3 and how my experience with the game was. So a little background, I'm Paperbot, and I'm a huge fan of the Big Hunt style games like God Eater, Dauntless, and Monster Hunter. I've been playing these games since Monster Hunter Freedom 2 on the PSP, but I didn't really get into the Big Hunt games until Ult 3 Ultimate, and finally had someone to show me the ropes on how to play the game. I really love the loop in these types of games, and I have been a big fan of them from the very beginning. Now I'm coming are my opinions and thoughts on the games that we're going to be talking about, and if you want to go ahead and pick it up at the end of 2020. Now, God Eater 3 is a Big Hunt or Monster Hunter style game, and I would call it a very anime Monster Hunter style game. And one big thing, sadly, we don't really have a genre name for these games yet, that's why I was calling it Big Hunt Games. But Monster Hunter and God Eater are completely different. God Eater 3 is a much more fast paced game, and it's closer to Devil May Cry style of combat and fighting than Monster Hunter, honestly. The different weapon types and how to use them really show the game's depth, since you have skills with your attacks such as ground, jump, and step. It really does flavor in the gameplay, honestly. Major parts of the game is the depth it has when you're choosing your equipment and skills that go along with it. Having 8 different weapon types and 4 types of guns to choose from can change your playstyle drastically. I'm simple with the weapons I use, but using the basic knife weapon was much more fun since I could change up the skills into the weapons. Like I said, DMC like gameplay. I could actually be flying into the monster, dashing, smashing my sword into the ground, you name it, honestly. One gripe I have with the game is the style and how it handles armor. Now, one big thing I really enjoy about the games is usually building my own different sets of armor. But in this game, armor is kind of like put onto your shield, so your shield is what really brings up your defense in your character, um, so if you actually make a better shield, the better the armor. So I mean, honestly, that's understandable, but there's really no customization when it comes to armor. I mean, you probably have more of like the style of clothing you can choose from and the style of your character can change, so that's one big thing you can go ahead and do. But it is understandably since the game is much more fast paced than your traditional Monster Hunter style of game, so in building one shield to upgrade your entire defense is fairly simple. It just kind of messes around with a lot of different things. At first it was a bit awkward for me to switch my weapons and use combos, but as the game progressed I was able to get used to all the many mechanics of the game. You have changing forms, devouring, burst mode, acceleration triggers, and of course status effects. Just like other games in the genre, you don't have a full on leveling system, but you can level up your skills and acceleration triggers. Upgrading the weapons, guns, and shields is the main point of the raw damage or raw defense of the game. Some cons is the map is very simple, which is always an area to fight origami in. Some origami are very forgettable. Picking up items on the map does take a backseat to the main focal point of the game, which is fighting Aragami, but at least in the system you do have a crafting system that you can go ahead and use to actually build the items that you need. So it's a lot different than when it comes to Monster Hunter. I guess in a sense that's one system I really enjoyed, because then you can actually just, instead of having to go back into the farming lands and farm another piece or even look for something that you need, um, you can actually just craft it. So it was pretty cool. Story. Now, the story is something you would see in a traditional anime, except you are in the right hand to the leader, Hugo. I won't go into the story too much since spoilers, just I'm just saying that you pretty much have everything a shonen anime would have.
No, personally I am getting close to the end of the game, and so far I have not been disappointed with the game, and I have been really enjoying the direction God Eater 3 is going, but I could also say it is not perfect. It passes for me to enjoy some of the systems, and some are better explained than others, but once you understand the systems or watch a YouTube video or two, it starts to open up God Eater 3. It does show some age on the map and origami, but it makes up with gameplay, and once again I will say this, these types of games are not for everyone. I know some big titles will be coming out soon, so if you need that itch to be scratched, feel free to pick up this game if it's on sale. Minutes.